It was a cold, clear night on the Woodhead line. It had been business as usual. Another day at the office, Mr. Solomon would say. At the yards at Sheffield, William and Timothy were being bedded down for the night, whilst Nemo was being prepared for a late-night freight towards Manchester. Derby, you know, I hardly remember the place, to be honest. Yeah, I'm from Leeds originally, but my earliest memories were Welsham. The old railway closed not long after I left. William noticed that Nemo was staring blankly into the distance, as if he was daydreaming. Whereabouts are you from then, Nemo? Oh, uh, I'm a crew engine originally. 1935. First batch like. I never got the chance to ask. How did you end up in that tunnel? Good question. Uh, well, I guess I'll start at the top. After I were built, I never really got to know any of my classmates, bar one. His name was Mike, or 8024 if you're being official. Built in the same month as me, and we often ended up on the same jobs. Like, we got about a bit. Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham. Busy, busy, as we like it. He was my first and best mate, without a doubt. And then the war came along. Well, Mark one of the 13 crew engines bit by the war department for overseas work. He just had his boiler done and he was in good form. He were a natural choice, you might say. Well, a week or so later, he told me he was going to Egypt, right in the midst of the fighting. I was so jealous. I really wanted to go with him. Get your driver to write us, I said, and he promised he would. Did you ever hear from him? Well, after he left, Life on the lines were like bedlam. You could vouch for me, Will. For weeks and weeks at a time, I hardly slept. Round-the-clock trains, crews working 14-hour shifts, bomb tracks, diversions, timetable alterations, war materials, I could hardly think. So much so, I forgot about Mike altogether. Nemo, the tunnel? Oh, ah, sorry. After the war, I was relocated to Sheffield and carried on under BR. At first it wasn't bad, but then I saw all the engines around me being run into the ground. Underserviced and unloved. Some of the older ones looked like they were made of bloody rust. I think it was the mid-sixties when a group of military-looking blokes came snooting about the yards. Turns out these were the men from the Strategic Steam Reserve looking for volunteers. You're waffling again. I'm getting there. They said I could be part of a special fleet of engines and that we'd be put into storage in secret locations around the country. So if the Russians attacked, well at the time everyone was certain that they would, they would call us back into service to get everything running again. Well I leapt at the chance. So they put you in the tunnel? Aye. They said, await further instructions. And uh, that was the last thing I heard for about 20 years. There was no attack. It was only then that I started thinking about Mark again, and how he was doing in Egypt. Guess he had the better end of the deal. Sun, sand, sea, I bet he were loving it. But, soot and brick dust would have to do. Been there, mate. Never again. Aye. Well, I'll see you later anyway. My train should be ready now. As Nemo went to collect his train, the other two engines pondered for a moment. Then William spoke up. He never did find out what happened to Mike, did he? I guess not. I think it's troubling him a little bit. I think they still use steam engine Egypt, you know. There should be some records somewhere. I'll ask Mr. Salmon and see what he can dig up. I don't know, mate. Do you think it's worth it? Well, you never know. I'll ask anyway. The next morning, William was set to leave Sheffield with a goods train. Just before he was due to leave, he saw Mr. Salmon on the platform. Mr. Salmon, sir? Morning, William. I have a small favor for you, sir, if it's no trouble. Of course, it's no trouble. What do you need? I want you to locate an engine for me, an 8F number 8024. He's an old friend of Nemo's who was exported to Egypt during the war. Could you look him up for me, please? Sure, I know a few people. I'll get back to you soon. Thank you, sir.
Later on, Timothy was at Wath when he saw Edwin, who had just dropped off a short goods train. Hello, Timothy. How are you today? I've been better. Oh? How so? I'm worried about Nemo. He told us about how he ended up in the Bredesen Tunnel. And a little bit about his friend Mike. Seemed a little sad, not knowing what became of him. So William asked Mr. Salmon to find out. And you're worried about what he'll tell you? Yes, I am. I'm worried he'll learn up his friend was blown to bits by a bomb or... Something just as horrifying. Ah, don't be so worried, my friend. Just be ready for the hard part, having to tell him. Things like that are never easy. Whether it's engines or humans, we all have to make hard choices and tell others things they don't want to hear. That's good advice. Thank you, Edwin. You're welcome. With that, Timothy prepared for his return journey, while Edwin went to pick up his return train. The next day, Mr. Salmon approached William and Timothy in the sheds. He looked very glum. Well, William, I found your engine, 8024, sent to Glasgow in 1941 for export to Egypt aboard the SS Tisselgorm. Please, sir, we know that already. Well, I'm afraid to say that Tisselgorm was sunk off the coast of Alexandria with its whole cargo. The two engines were stunned. How were they going to break into Nemo that his best friend was a wreck at the bottom of the ocean? Do you want me to tell him? I think I should tell him, sir. It was my idea to investigate in the first place. If you wish. Oh dear. I hope he'll be okay. Later that day, Nemo was taken on coal. William approached him nervously. I'll do well. You're looking a bit tense. Yeah, Nemo. There's something I have to tell you. Oh, yeah? It's what I've learned about Mike. Oh? I'm sorry, my friend, but he was sunk with his ship on the way to Egypt. He never got there to fight for the country. Nemo was silent as the news sunk in. William could see he was fighting the tears. I think I need to be alone, mate. I understand, mate. Nemo went back to work as he always did, but everyone who passed him could see he was a changed engine. They steered clear. They could tell he needed to be alone. But they felt very sorry for him. That evening, Timothy sat in the siding when Nemo pulled up next to him. There was a silence for a minute, that when finally, Timothy spoke. I'm sorry, Nemo. I know how hard it is to lose a friend. Thanks, Tim. I just... I just can't believe he didn't make it. Didn't get a chance to help his countrymen fight the battles. You know, I thought by joining the SSR I could be a war hero too. But for both of us it were all for now. I wish I was scrapped. Don't talk like that, Nemo. You're a great engine, and you're doing a fantastic job on the railway. He's right, you know. I know I'm lucky to still have Nigel around, but even if I lost him, I wouldn't give up. He'd want me to carry on being the engine I was built to be. I'm sure Mike would feel the same about you, Nemo. Don't lose faith in yourself. You're one of us now. You have plenty of good friends here. Nemo's mood lifted. Cheers, lads. You're a great bunch. I know it hurts, but thanks for letting me know about Mike. It's better to know the truth. That's what friends are for, right? Right. Aye. Nemo felt better after that, knowing that his friends were all there for him in his time of need, and knowing that he was an important part of the railway. The Woodhead engines know that a little courage and togetherness can solve anything.